Our brains are more likely to think that a thing is good if we're told it's good beforehand. This is part of something called the anchoring effect, and it has a huge influence on game design and on our outlook on our games. When Plants vs. Zombies came out, researchers used it to do a study. They handed the game to three groups of people. They told the first group that critics had given Plants vs. Zombies a 91. They told the second group that critics had given the game a 61. And they told the third group nothing. Then they had everybody play the game themselves for a while. When asked to give the game a score afterward, the group that was shown high review scores ahead of time gave it an 85. The group that was shown low review scores gave it a 71, and the group which hadn't been shown any reviews at all gave it a 79. That is a huge spread. I mean, I would feel pretty okay buying any full-price game that scored an 85, but for a game that I saw with a score of 71, a lot of us would probably hesitate, maybe wait for a sale, or even decide not to buy it at all. And this wasn't just some slapdash study. It was rigorous and statistically significant. And there have been plenty of others like it outside the gaming world with consistent results. If we start playing a game that we have seen highly reviewed, we are a lot more likely to forgive its flaws and notice its positive aspects, which means that we're a lot more likely to recommend it to other people. Because we genuinely believe we enjoyed it more. And a bad review has the opposite effect. Every bug or glitch that we see will just confirm our anchored perception that the game just isn't that good, and make us that much more likely to give it a thumbs down on Steam, and tell all of our friends to just not bother. If you've ever wondered why you see some game companies go to such great lengths to put their games in friendly reviewers' hands first, especially for previews, this is why. They know that the tone of those early preview impressions will subconsciously influence the rest of the reviewers that come after, almost certainly increasing the game's average score. It's also part of the reason why it's so uncommon for games to get a wide range of high and low review scores. This is because anchoring affects us based on the first data we see about something. It's not just that we're more likely to believe that a thing is good if we're told it's good beforehand. It's that we're very likely to use the first piece of data we get about something as a baseline, a guide which helps us to construct a mental model of how to reasonably view that thing. And this is a huge factor when it comes to sales events, too. Did you ever buy a game during a Steam sale just because it was 70% off and then proceed to never, ever play it? Paying full price for a game that you're never gonna play is not a good deal. And it's still not a good deal at 70% off, because you didn't play it. Sure, you did get it for $6 instead of $20, but its actual worth is zero if it's a game you're never gonna play. But the first piece of data your brain got about that game was that it was worth $20. The price had been anchored at $20 for you. The $20 price tag was part of your brain's mental model of that game. So, when you saw it listed for $6, your brain said, Whoa, dude, that is a great deal and we have got to get it before it goes away. The usual example used to explain the concept of anchoring is used cars. Whatever price is first proposed usually anchors the preceding negotiations. People negotiate from that number, and they will often think that they've gotten a good deal if they can haggle the salesman's $20,000 quote down to $10,000 without ever realizing that the car's value was actually $6,000 all along. Of course, it doesn't work if the salesman proposes something ludicrous like $10 million up front or something. Your brain will reject that right away. But for objects of nebulous value, your brain often has a pretty wide field for what it's willing to accept as reasonable. I mean, I'm not sure I can tell the difference between a $2,000 used car and a $4,000 used car, even though one of those is literally double the price. For games, the number your brain will accept is generally between free and $60. And sometimes there's really not a good reason why a game costs what it does. It's just the publisher's guess about what the market will bear. But weirdly, all other things being equal, if a game launches at $60 and then happens to go on sale for $20, a bunch of people, people who would not have bought the game if it launched for $20, will spend $20 to buy it on sale. Because they saw that $60 price point first and anchored their perception of the game's value there, their brain will then see that $20 price point as a steal. 
Of course, publishers getting greedy and abusing this anchoring effect often backfires. People get a lot more upset when they buy a disappointing game at $60 than when they buy a disappointing game at $20. And setting too high an original price point may leave the game with too small of a community to have quality matchmaking, or garner too few initial sales to show up on those all-important Steam charts. But this idea of price anchoring is a real one, and it is almost omnipresent in the free-to-play space. Go look at any free-to-play game's in-game store, and notice how the larger purchase increments make a point of highlighting how good a value they offer, showing you how much currency you should be getting, how much you will be, quote, saving by buying large quantities. That is them anchoring the value of their currency. In fact, many of these games will set one of their package prices as their anchor price, not really expecting you to buy it, but just to make your brain think, hmm, that price seems reasonable. Then you'll look at the next tier up, and your brain will see it as a better deal. It's also why they so often set certain prices unreasonably high. Because no matter what you personally would have estimated the value of that thing to be on your own, they know that they are more likely to get you to shell out $3 for something if they first anchor its perceived value at $10. We use this within games, too. When an NPC describes how awesome an item is going to be just before you get it, or if they tell you how dangerous an upcoming boss is just before you have to face them, that's what we're doing. We are anchoring the perception of those things in your brain. And this will backfire if we totally overestimate how cool or threatening those things turn out to be, but if we are at least in the ballpark, you are more likely to look at that pretty cool sword that we've been hyping up and think to yourself, heck yeah, this is everything I hoped it would be. The anchoring effect is happening to you all over the place. It's hyping you up as you play, it's trying to loosen your wallet in free-to-play games and Steam sales, and it is definitely amplifying the importance of positive previews and early review scores. And knowing that it exists sure isn't going to make you immune to it, but if you keep your eyes open and know what to look for, you just might see it in action. See you next week.